Mylan historian Billy Thompson gives us a tour of his crafty museum filled with radios, old photos, and other Mylan artifacts. My name is Billy Thompson. Uh, I'm a Mylan, and somebody asked, uh, how did I ever happen to get into Mylan? Well, I am the third generation of uh, from my grandfather, my daughter, is the fourth generation here. So how did this idea of a museum come about to be? In 1983, when my father was still living, he decided, I think we're going to have to uh, create some history of Milan here. And so he got the idea of making a museum. We did not pursue this very much. My father passed away in 1985. And when I retired in 1993, I continued this idea about making a museum. I came up with the idea of collecting old barn doors and granary doors. And I did this for a whole year. I took these and put them all together, and uh, after all these years, this is what I have created. The good Lord put an idea into my head. From there, we put it into my heart. And from my heart, we put it into my hands. And so this is what was created. And I do this just for the uh, benefit of the community. So when the days come by, when I'm longer here, no longer here, uh, we'll be able to tell about the history of this store. Milan get its name. There are several versions of how Milan got its name. Uh, when they worked on the railroad, there were people that came from Milan, Italy, and they uh, worked on it. That's one version. And another version of this was uh, when this T. Anderson became a very, very well-to-do person. He had bought a lot of land up here. His first farm was up uh, south of town, up on the top of the hill. When he had some people coming visit from Norway, he told them, he says, look out. What you see there is all my land. That's one version. But, and about a year later, I got a telephone call from somebody from southern Saskatchewan. And they said, both of those are wrong. And this person said, my grandfather was the one that gave Milan his name. He was the one that bought the land uh, from the government for the railroad. His name was James E. Milan. That's uh, how it originally came. Uh, you see a bunch of radio, uh, a collection of radios that I have collected from my father and uh, throughout the years I've collected these. So, and they came out with the first uh, radios from Minneapolis in about 1925 or so. And so he figured the only way that you could get a radio, or you could hear a radio uh, back in 1922, and 1923, and 4 and 5, was to put uh, a set of earphones on. Or here is one of the first earphones. And my dad said, uh, I can uh, create something. So in 1925, he figured, there's got to be a better way that I, I can get better reception. Well, my father designed this box, and all it is is a tuner, a coil, and a ground, and an antenna. And he doubled the volume of that radio. And between 1925 and 1930, he had 15 guys working upstairs in the store for a dollar and a half a day, and he sold and made 30,000 of them, shipped them to every state of the Union, even in Hyder, Alaska. Okay, how did I start taking these photos? I found one large photograph from my grandfather when he was in the, uh, when he was in the store here. Like, and I was so impressed with this, I said, I have to do something to continue on with the history of my family and of the area. 
where I had the large picture made, and then where I started thinking about, I need to collect a bunch of pictures for this year. Or I put an ad in the paper for six weeks. I got about 15 photographs. I wish I would add more. But I took those 15 photographs and I took them to senior citizens meetings and wherever a group of elderly people were. And I would ask them, do you have a picture or I have a picture of? And, and uh, within a, uh, about a year or so, I was able to collect 400 old photographs which I do have all these, and I brought them over to Madison and C. Edward Stewart, and he's redone all of these here. And how do we retain these here? When he made these pictures, he made a three and a half by five to them, and he made two negatives each one, so these are all on file. So if something happens here, uh, we'll still have s some uh, record of what these pictures were all about. I am so proud of this place when people from uh, all over help me do this. You need to be surprised. The people that come out here every single year and do hunting, and they said, I've heard about you, museum. So I wanted to gather all these, old, these pictures here. And a lot of time, people from the cities don't know much about the rural area. We in the rural area don't know too much about the, what the cities. And when they come and see what has been created here, they cannot believe of all the history here. Just find out how uh, our forefathers came here and what they went through and what we are uh, doing to tell the history of these people. I was very, very proud of my grandfather and grandmother and uh, the people in my heritage and my father and everyone like that. If they knew what I was trying to do, tell a history of what they went through to get here and what they did when they came here. Well, this is why I want to leave this place. After I leave this earth, I want to leave this so people can see uh, what was Milan like in the past. And by doing that, you can get an idea what should we do in the future. The past always forms your future.